Hello and welcome to another video tutorial by ScreencastWorld.com. In this screencast I'll show you how to clone an existing Magento Commerce site so you can develop and upgrade it offline without affecting your production website. Before we begin I just want to make it clear that you can't clone a website that you don't own or haven't been granted administrative rights to. This procedure assumes you have direct access to the web server and the ability to create backups of the file system and databases. If you don't have the necessary credentials for the website you're cloning, this procedure isn't going to work for you. So for this tutorial I'll be cloning an existing Magento Commerce site it's called solargizmo.co.uk which sells a variety of solar panels and renewable energy based products. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're a bit of an eco warrior. So for this tutorial I'm using OpenSolaris and the WebStack AMP bundle. I've already created an entry in my EC host file for the solargizmo.co.uk domain that I'm cloning and in my Apache vhost and ssl.conf files I've created a virtual host to service this domain for both the HTTP and HTTPS protocols. I've also created a directory from which Apache will serve the files for this domain and created a very basic homepage to show how this works. So when I go to my domain in a browser I should get my simple homepage. And then we have the HTTP version, and if I go to HTTPS, this also works as well. So if you don't want the hassle of configuring your offline web server to run the HTTPS protocol, you'll need to change the settings for your offline Magento Commerce site to prevent it from using the HTTPS URL in the secure URL settings. When you upload the offline version to your production web server, you'll need to change the settings to point them back at the HTTPS URLs. With the working local web server in place, we now need to create a backup of the website we want to clone. The method for creating the backup depends on your hosting solution and personal preferences. As a quick example, I'll show you how to create a backup using the backup wizard within the cPanel. So having logged into the cPanel, I'll, under the files section, I'll click on the backup wizard. And this gives you two options. We obviously want to create a backup, so I'm going to click on the backup link. And again, two further options. We can either create a full backup or a partial backup. Now I'm going to select a partial backup because I want to backup the home directory and the databases separately. So I'm going to go to the home directory first. Click on the button here and you'll get the option to save the backup of your home directory to a local file system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So while that's downloading, I can now go back and click on the MySQL databases and here you can see a list of databases available so I'm going to click on the Magento Commerce one and again you get the pop-up dialog asking us to save the file so we're going to go ahead and save that to the same location as our home directory backup Okay, so with the backups now made, we now need to restore the database and the file system to our local web server. So I'll start by restoring the database first, and for this I'll be using the PHP My Admin interface. Uh, but you can very easily do this via the command line if you so wished. With the exception of XAMPP for Windows, PHP My Admin won't have been part of your AMP stack, so download and install it to your local web server. Links are in the show notes. In a previous screencast I showed you how to create a MySQL database and database user for a Magento installation, so I won't dwell on the specifics too much here. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put a link to the previous video tutorial in the show notes. You'll need to create a database using the same database name as your production website. You'll then need to create a new user using the same username and password as your production site. So with the database uh, created and selected, we now need to click on the import tab at the top. And in the area at the top where we see the file to import, we just need to click on the browse and select the file that we backed up earlier. We're going to leave these as default, so I'm going to click on go. Now depending on the size of the backup you made and how many products you have in your database, this may take a few moments. So if the import was successful, you'll get the acknowledgement at the top saying how many entries or rows were entered into the database 
and we can see on the left hand side all the tables that are part of our Magento installation. So this looks pretty good, so we're going to move on to now restoring the home directory and getting the website up and running. The backup of the home directory we took earlier contains everything from your home directory on your production web server. And we only need the necessary information from the Magento installation directory. So I'm going to extract the archive first and then copy what I need to my local web server's root directory. So now that the archive has been extracted, I now need to recursively copy everything under the public underscore HTML directory to my local web server's root directory. Don't forget to copy the hidden files such as .htaccess as well. Now if your web server is on a Unix based platform you'll now need to change the ownership of the files we just copied so the files are owned by the web server user. So next we need to go in and clean up the Magento's var directory to remove any existing session and cache files so I'll do that now. Okay, so if we go back to our web browser and refresh what used to be our offline uh, dummy homepage, we should, in theory, get the new website. And there we go, this looks fairly promising. We've got the homepage displayed here. Uh, if we go to some of these uh, submenus here, let's see if these still work. This all seems to work, it's worth just spending a few minutes making sure that your local copy of the website does have all the features and functionality working and any issues you'll just need to correct. If your offline copy of Magento doesn't work the first time, you may have to debug it. So one of the first things I tend to do is go and edit the index.php for your Magento installation. And down the bottom you'll see these two lines, the uh, is set developer mode is true and any set display errors equals one. And it's, it's the second one that's the most important but you can enable both if you prefer. Uh, the second one will display any errors from PHP uh, that can be really useful to tell you where the problem might be. Uh, you also want to take a look in the Magento var log and var report directories for any new or updated files, those can be very useful as well. And you also want to have a look at your web server access and error log files to see if there's any errors being logged from the web server level. Once you've found the error, try searching the Magento forums or Google to see if other people have experienced the same issue and posted the fixes. You'll find answers to the most common issues posted on screencastworld.com under the how to fix section. And that brings us to the end of this particular video tutorial. If you found this useful, please take a moment to rate the video and leave me a comment.